What's up you guys, Stoops back again with another video and today I'm bringing you my BFA 8.15 healer tier list for PvP. I'm getting this question a lot on my stream. Now if you're interested in checking out my stream, the link will be somewhere down there underneath this little webcam thing here. Uh, you can get to know the real me and then also ask me a lot of my, you know, all these questions that people have been asking me recently about changes and things like that. You know, I try and keep my shit kind of PG here on YouTube because you never know who's going to be watching, but on my stream, uh, there's no filters there and it's a great place to ask me anything that you want to ask me. Now, if you're looking for PvE content, I'll also put some videos down there in the description box below. I know a lot of people have questions about PvE and there's a lot of great content out there for PvE for World of Warcraft, so I'll refer you to some of those channels if you are looking for PvE healer tier list but for today's video i'm going to be breaking down several healers in different tiers you can see an s plus tier an s tier an a tier and a b tier that's how tier lists work the s tier s plus tier being probably the strongest healer currently in the s tier you know being the second strongest but in this tier list there is not, not too much of a gap between some of the healers there is one healer i would say that's kind of predominant you might be able to guess what that is let me know in the comment section below if you can try and figure that out before you watch this video i'm going to show refer you or show you a website that you can use to try and get information on a lot of these questions like what healer is the most predominant or what enchants to use what stats to use i'll show you all of that uh in this video so you don't have to go around and ask these questions and be a noob and embarrass yourself if that's what you're worried about jumping right into the video the first healer or the s plus tier healer is going to be the resto druid now resto druids have been for the past couple months or so the strongest healer inside of battle for azeroth after a lot of changes that happened in the meta now resto druids have been nerfed over the past couple months or so since they were very strong and then going on to now they've been nerfed several times in terms of how much healing they're doing uh, their mana regeneration their mana efficiency and then we also saw some recent changes to all healers in, in regards to like purge cyclone tangling roots having a uh, reduced mana cost to try to combat these recent mana changes now i did talk about this in a previous video maybe a link will be somewhere here where mana was recently changed if you're coming back to the game and healers were ooming much faster but blizzard did a you know a good job in trying to correct this and now it's kind of starting to stabilize but resto druids are still probably the best healer because they're all over the meta right now they're great in 3v3s and 2v2s in fact i'll show you some statistics here to kind of back up what i'm saying so in the past i used to refer you guys to arenamate.net and then i recently switched over to the lootdistrict.com now the cool thing about the lootdistrict.com is it has tons of information and it's a lot more it's, it's a lot easier to use in terms of the interface but it has information on several things not just representation it has talent choices in terms of what people are using at different ratings spec overviews uh, in terms of what specs people are playing based on rating honor talent selections azurite traits what the average choice of azurite traits are for specific players at specific ratings gear races all that stuff so when you're asking me these questions or you're asking people these questions what you know what stats should i be using as this class or what azurite traits are the best all of this information is right here for you so you can educate yourself and you don't have to ask these questions and look like a noob now we're going to quickly go over to class representation for the resto druid just to back up what i'm saying here even though it's kind of apparent if you are doing arena now overall 2v2 class representation you can see here that we have resto druid by far at the top they are way above every other class and every other healer for that matter and even in uh we go to 3v3s for example by switch over to 3v3s they're still the top and then trace closely behind the holy paladin now when really breaking down the rest of druids one of their greatest strengths is they do not really rely on cooldowns they have very short consistent cooldowns like iron bark bark skin and swift men but unlike holy paladins rest of druids do not need these cooldowns to really survive they can simply rely on their amazing healing output they still have some of the greatest or strongest healing output in the entire game they're very disruptive based on their ability to use things like cyclone and tangling roots bash vortex i've talked about this in the past but they can be very disruptive when paired with a class like a mage or a warlock or any other caster that has a lot of cc adding a wrestler druid onto that makes it very difficult for melee cleaves or melee comps to really do anything or get any offense going and because of that, we're not seeing as many melee cleaves. And that is where Resto Druid really shines. We're currently in a dampener meta where the games are getting drawn out a lot longer than normal and healers are having to go for drinks. And because of this, the games just feel like they're taking forever. And we're going into a term called dampening where healing is reduced. You, know, you don't have to worry about that until you get into arena. But Resto Druids are the king of dampeners. And because of that, 
we are seeing them all over the place. And the biggest thing I wanna talk about at four wrestler druids in today's video is they can simply do it all. Because of things like, you know, Feral Affinity and 2v2s, they can be very aggressive and get restelts off, or even in 3v3s, if you're playing with like a caster or two casters, they're not gonna be able to go the wrestler druid as easily. And because of that, the, you know, the wrestler druid can get restelts off, restelts off very easily and then reopen with rakes and stuns and make it super difficult for the enemy healer to get anything going or even the melee DPS or the other casters to get anything going. They also can play things like Guardian Affinity, which is usually the baseline talent for Druids, the base pick for Druids, and they're very tanky, so they're hard to take down. And because of this, Russo Druids are probably the strongest healer because they can do everything. In the past, they only played Caster Cleaves, and then if they played Melee Cleaves, they only be like the dampener style healer and it wasn't the best for these melee cleaves but because we were in a dampener meta having a wrestler druid is great because of their healing output and they can go for drinks much easier when compared to some of the other healers because of that stealth mechanic they can hop into their you know their cat form or their feral form i should say and then you know re-stealth and get a drink off there in stealth and come out with full mana other healers do not have that luxury now one of their weaknesses are or is, is they have or are very poor in terms of mana efficiency. They're not the most mana efficient healer when compared to some of the other healers. They do oom rather quickly, but it's not too much of a weakness because, like I said earlier, they can just go off in stealth and get drinks and rely on their hots to keep their teammates up, and then they can come out of stealth and just instantly pop things like Overgrowth, Swift Men, or Bark Skin because they're all short CDs, and that allows them to stay in the game much more efficiently or much more effectively, I should say, when compared to some of the other healers. So right now, Wrestler Druids are still my S plus tier healer. It's not as large of a gap as it was in the past. In 2v2s, they're probably prob they're still probably the best healer. Uh, and 3v3s, it's, it's starting to shorten. The gap is starting to shorten, but Wrestler Druid is still my top pick at this moment for 8.15. Hopping into the S tier, any healer that I do name within the S tier is interchangeable. So do not take it, you know, don't take offense or take it too seriously if I pick the Holy Paladin over a specific healer within in this tier but holy paladin has to be one of the strongest healers in 8.15 because of their mana efficiency number one they are most likely the most mana efficient healer right now in the meta they just never run out of mana depending on how they have to heal or how much damage the enemy team is doing or how they can manage their cooldowns or how well they can manage their cooldowns they will almost out mana every single healer so going to or trying to out mana a holy paladin is never really a strategy i would say it's very difficult to do it does happen but when compared to like a rustler druid or a missy room monk it's not even close uh holy paladin is very effective at that now on top of that holy paladins deal great damage for a healer recently they had some new traits uh been being implemented and new traits being used by holy paladins in fact i'll hop over and show you some of the statistics here and show you uh, what these traits actually do so really quickly looking at the class representation for 3v3 you can see holy paladin is very close behind the restoration druid and in 2v2s it's not so close but it's still close enough to give them that s you know, that S tier spot, but when going over to some of the Azrite traits for Paladins and going over to Holy, you can see a lot of players taking advantage of these damage traits that also can kind of be translated to healing as well. So uh, for the tier four trait or the outer ring trait, we see people stacking traits like Glimmer of Light. Glimmer of Light will basically put a buff on a target or a debuff uh, in some cases on the target after you Holy Shock that target and that target will receive or uh, take damage when you Holy Shock. So you can put it on a enemy and then Holy Shock thereafter, and then they will either take bonus damage or you can put on an ally, and then they will receive bonus healing. Now on top of that, within the inner ring traits, we can see people stacking things like Indomitable Justice. Indomitable Justice is a very powerful trait uh, I, I noticed it the other day, and I might play a clip here on the screen or show you something on the screen. With Indomitable Justice, your judgment will deal additional damage when your health percentage exceeds the target. So if you have higher HP than the enemy, you can deal up to a bonus amount of damage. And if you are much lower than the enemy, it acts as an execute. I was hit for a 30k judgment, a 30k judgment from a Holy Paladin. And with talents like Fist of Justice, which is the predominant choice for Holy Paladins, you're going to be throwing out a lot of judgments throughout the match to lower the cooldown on your Hammer of Justice. So that means a lot of additional damage. I play a Mistweaver Monk primarily. That's my main class that I play in World of Warcraft right now. And I'm always thinking I'm doing a lot of damage. I do have a lot of burst damage, but 
but in terms of consistent or overall damage i always get out damaged by a holy paladin because of how many judgments they're throwing out during the match now the holy paladin is amazing at burst healing you'll notice that when they pop their wings or use things like divine favor one of their healing cooldowns they're going to heal or top someone almost instantly you can get someone to low hp and then they can top them now when they run out of their wings their their their, their main healing cooldown or uh, they don't have divine favor up then they will use some of their defensive cds like blessing of sacrifice or blessing of protection now with these they can stall the game very long but the problem is with holy paladin is when they run out of these cooldowns they really just fall apart they they, they run out of their healing becomes very low and they don't have anything to really stall the game any longer so they really do rely on these cooldowns when compared to some of the other healers without cooldowns a holy paladin is very weak but if you manage them correctly they can stall out the game for a long time so it's on the holy paladin and you know they're the, the opposing team with the holy paladin to try to manage try to manage your cooldowns effectively and use their defensives correctly as a team but if they mess up somewhere along the line then it will fall apart for the holy paladin now i think a holy paladin is a great beginner class i think the rest of the is a little bit more complex but i think they both have their skill caps i know some amazing holy paladins one of my friends zez he knows so much more about the Holy Paladin than I do. And when I try and play it, it's a simple class to pick up, but it's definitely difficult when I have to try and figure everything out about the class and all the ins and outs when compared to like the Mistweaver for me, which I feel like the Mistweaver is just a much more simple healer. Um, but the Paladin, the Holy Paladin, a great beginner's choice, a very strong healer at the moment. If you like doing damage, they, they can start dealing out tons of damage with those damage traits, Indomitable Justice. Um, but you know, they're just a very cooldown reliant class. So if that's not your style, that might not be a great pick for you, but it's definitely a strong healer in 8.15. Switching over to Miss Weaver Monks within the S tier, they are right behind Holy Paladins, in my opinion, or arguably, you know, one of the best healers in the game right now. Miss Weaver Monks are very strong at the moment. They were in the past, they've been known to be one of the healers that are, you know, accompanied with melee cleaves. That is probably still the case. However, Holy Paladins and Wrestle Druids can do that just fine. Miss Weaver Monk has always been known to play with things like, you know, Warriors and Death Knights and just big heavy melee cleaves, turbo cleave in the past. That is an enhancement shaman warrior. That comp isn't as strong right now. Melee cleaves in general aren't that strong, but Miss Weaver Monk is also very good at playing with casters now, double caster cleaves. They have insane healing output, similar to the Resto Druid, but I think it's a much more bursty style healing than Resto Druid. Uh, they have short life saving cool and a short life saving cooldown, uh, as known as Life Cocoon. Life Cocoon is very strong at the moment with things like Bursts of Life, that is a specific Azurite trait that makes a cocoon a shorter CD, making it a 55 second CD, and it heals for a crazy amount after it expires if that target is kind of off and secluded by itself. So. Life Cocoon on a short CD right now is making Mistweaver and is probably carrying Mistweaver at the moment. They were much stronger in a previous patch, but right now they're still very, very strong because of that short Cocoon cooldown and that massive healing output. They also have very strong mobility for a healer, probably the best mobility, Rustle Druid, King Count of Keep Up, and they're relatively mana efficient when compared to some of the other healers, depending on the play style. Some healers that play Mistweaver go oom very fast, but depending on your comp, you can be relatively mana efficient. The one thing I will say though, is similar to Resto Druids, because of their mobility, they can sneak off and get drinks, just not as easily as the Resto Druid. Now you're probably wondering, well, Mistweaver sounds really powerful. What's one of their weaknesses? They are probably the easiest healer to die in a single stun. Next to Discipline Priest, but Discipline Priest still can use Pain Suppression if they're stunned, and they're a little bit more durable. They have more outs, I would say, to getting swapped in a stun. When compared to Mistweaver, if you get caught in a stun as a Mistweaver versus like a Rogue Mage, which is one of their, you know, one of the hardest comps to win as a Mistweaver, Rogue Mage X, if you get caught in a stun, you die instantly. You absolutely explode. If they, you know, if you get out of the stun, then you can use things like Cocoon, but sometimes that's not enough. So they're very susceptible to dying in a stun. They're rather squishy, but they do provide a lot of extra pressure. Uh, using Wave of the Crane and Burst Healing. You're going to notice that if you fight against a Miss Weaver, he probably has the most healing output in the match. They're also great in RBGs. In fact, let me show you the statistics. So heading over to class representation for 2v2s and 3v3s, you're going to see the Miss Weaver Monk kind of trailing behind the Holy Paladin in 2v2s. And in 3v3s, it's very similar. They're, they're, they're a solid option right now 
for arena if you're an rbg player and you're into doing rbgs you're gonna see that discipline priest and mystery monk are one of the top healers for rbg so in rbgs if that's your thing mystery monk is a great healer and i think it's a great healer for beginners that are trying to pick up the game there are some ins and outs to the mystery that do take some time but if you're interested in coaching you can check out the information right here and i can get you up to speed on the mystery and get you going and get you that rating that you've always wanted well not me personally but i'll coach you and you'll get better much better than you would if you were to play by yourself that's a shameless plug but i gotta pay off these student loans but enough about that back to the video i think mystery is a good beginner healer but it's very stat dependent in fact the mystery in, in general it's just a very stat, you know, stat dependent class. You need versatility and all those different stats. But you can find out all the stats checking out the loot district. Don't forget, link in the description. Now, hopping into the A tier, you can see here that I have the Resto Shaman on the screen. Resto Shaman is just not as good as some of the other healers. They are relatively tanky if you have the correct traits and talents. Things like Pack Spirit Resto Shamans can just sit there and have someone beat on them for a long time and they can survive those moments in 2v2. And they have a very solid toolkit for a healer. They have a ranged interrupt, a ranged kick for casters known as wind shear. They have things like grounding totem purge. They have a stun with capacitor totem. They have slows, they have roots. They have a lot of you know abilities at their disposal and they're relatively mana efficient for a healer. They have several life-saving cooldowns, uh, you know, um, Spirit Link Totem. They have things like Earthen Totem. They have a lot of CDs that they can use and a short wall at their disposal, but they have a lot of CDs that they can use to kind of recover. Ascendance recently got a buff too. It's a big AOE heal now when you pop your Ascendance and it's a great tool to recover as a healer. Chain Heal heals for a lot, but you oom fast. The problem with you know, Resto Shaman right now is they just have a low healing output when compared to some of the other healers. In the past, Resto Shamans were known uh, uh, playing very aggressive melee cleaves, but Mystery Monks are kind of taking over that territory and being a super aggressive healer right now in this meta isn't very effective. Uh, and then, you know, they were also known to play these caster cleaves, but Resto Druid just does a better job because they have a ton of CC at their disposal and they have a lot more healing output and they can get those drinks off. You know, if Resto Shaman gets a buff in terms of their healing output, then we can see Resto Shaman make an easy comeback and even surpass some of the other healers here on this list because they have an amazing toolkit. They have a ranged kick, they have grounding totem, they have purge that can spam now and the mana cost on purge was recently reduced. So they have a great toolkit. Just right now their healing output is rather, is rather low. So until that gets changed, I can't just put them uh, in the same category as some of these other healers. Now, moving on to Disc Priests, we have Discipline Priests here in the A tier. Disc Priests are, I would say, arguably one of the weakest healers at the moment. They have a solid toolkit, Mass Spell, great. One of the only cooldowns that can get rid of things like Cyclone and, and, and you know, Paladin Bubble and Ice Block. They have Fear, Mind Control, Purge, they can double the spell, unlike every other healer currently in the game. They have great pressure for a healer. They can deal tons of damage and they use that damage to heal. And if you're a skilled disc priest, you can be a mana efficient using that damage uh, to uh, be mana efficient and heal your team. But the problem is with this priest is they just flop right now. They fall over so easily to so many melee cleaves. They have great cooldowns like, you know, uh, they have, you know, Dome, Dome of Lights or that big barrier cooldown they can use to reduce up to 70% damage. But what happens is, is there's two melees that are just going to see a Disc Priest and they're going to run them down and the Disc Priest is going to explode. And the problem with that is, is there's barriers to this game. In fact, I can show you some stats here in a second, but there's barriers to arena tier barriers where you might be at a lower rating bet bracket and all you see are double melee comps. And then these Disc Priests simply can't get past that barrier to fight some of these Spellcaster comps. But once again, Resto Druids or these other healers do just, just do a better job. Um, Again, if we saw some uh, you know positive changes to Disc Priest in terms of their uh, mana efficiency, I would say, in terms of uh, how well they can survive, giving them back a focused will at a higher number where they don't just fall over to these melee cleaves so easily, then I would see them higher on this list. Now, the reason they're not in the B tier right now is because Disc Priest still have Rogue Mage Priest, and they still can play certain comps where Disc Priest are not going to be the main focus if you're playing with like two casters where they can't afford to go the disc priest then disc priest might shine in that matchup but if you're playing something like jungle where two melees can easily just run down that disc priest you know 
they're gonna fall over so disc priest i think still in terms of statistics they're relatively up there you can see disc priests still are above resto shamans on some of these graphs but resto shamans have a wide variety of comps that they could play where disc priests can't really compete in that area and disc priests still have you know rogue mage priest which is a comp that people still can play but and in an rbg disc priests are one of the stronger healers in rbgs so disc priests in general are you know a well-rounded healer but they fall over too easy to melee cleaves for me to put them in the other tiers and right now they definitely need some work along with resto shamans i would say now finally moving on to the last and bottom tier the b tier we have the holy priest now holy priest you guys they just suck they're just not as good as any of the other healers they cast too much they're not even that mana efficient when compared to some of the other healers and they don't really bring anything to the table that the other healers don't bring i mean disc priest and holy priest fall over at the same rate if anything disc priest is better at surviving against melee cleaves and holy priest and there's just no reason to play with the holy priest right now they're considered just the worst healer in the game by far i don't even see holy priest i'm sure we can look at the statistics together when looking at these stats they're all the way here at the bottom next to frost death knights and brewmaster monks they're just they're a spec that is just not in arena at the moment this could change in maybe a future expansion but right now, I mean, you know, last expansion, they were pretty relevant at some points. But at this moment, Holy Priests are just not relevant. They haven't been relevant in the entire expansion. And just based on the toolkit and how I've seen Blizzard go about these changes, I don't expect them to move anywhere anytime soon. But that is just my healer tier list for 8.15. I try to back them up and give you some information using the loot district and some statistics to show you what healers are relevant and prevalent within the current 8.15 meta. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up if you're excited to see me release a melee or caster version of this series tier list video for 8.15. You can let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Big shout out to everyone who's been supporting me this whole time on Patreon. Without you guys, this channel, this YouTube, Twitch thing would not be possible. So thank you guys all so much. And if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, the link will be somewhere here on the screen. And for supporting me on Patreon, you can also earn yourself some of the most inexpensive coaching anywhere for World of Warcraft PvP on the internet. Again, the link and all the info is somewhere here. So go check it out. Try to miss me on my Twitch live stream where I answer all of your guys' questions in depth. Do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.